That's fantastic. Okay, so um, I've been passionate about electronic games since I was about yay high. I still am passionate about electronic games. My son is passionate about games and blockchain games and has done some work in the area. And this panel is going to be all about gaming and NFTs. That's so true. And there's so many people on here. We should, we should let them introduce themselves when they grab the mic. Where's, yeah, we'll just do that. Y'all introduce yeah. yourself. Welcome to the gaming yourselves, NFT y'all are panel. Awesome. Come on. Crypto Stash! Give it up for her. Very nice, awesome people. Dirk of Upland. Those are people that I know. I don't know the rest of you guys yet, but y'all are awesome. Good luck. How you guys doing out there? Good. It's, it's, you know, it's a little late in the day. I know we've had a lot of panels, a lot of stuff going on. I appreciate you guys sticking around here at Radio City Music Hall. Uh, my name is Crypto Stash. Uh, most couple people just call me Stash, and I'm uh, really, you know, excited to be here. I have some amazing panelists with me today. Uh, we have Amy Wu from FTX. We have Sebastian Bourget from Sandbox. Uh, we have Dirk Luth, right? Dirk Luth, right? From, uh, yeah, from, uh, from uh, um, uh, Upland. Upland. I'm like, it's right there on his shirt, man. <laughs> Sarah Jean McKenna from Alien Worlds, and we have uh, James here from Revolving Games. So I appreciate you. And, and, and we can't forget my buddy, Kagi, over here. Kagi, and he's also a fellow you, content creator. What's going on, man? Thanks, you guys, thank for being you. here. So, uh, you know, when it comes to NFTs and gaming, you know, I'm sure we've seen a lot of the backlash that gamers have. How many guys out there are gamers? Any gamers in the audience? Raise your hand. I know you got to be. There's got to be more gamers other than that, man. You guys have played some video games. There, there's been a lot of backlash in the industry with, you know, gamers not really accepting NFTs, like, in a wholeheartedly type of way. Uh, but one of the things that we see in the industry is, well, why, 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 why NFTs, right? What, what are they going to do to make the gaming industry better? And that's the first question I have for you guys. And maybe you can start with this, Amy. What, what is it that a, a, NFTs and gaming are going to do for the gaming industry to make it better, improve the experience? So, you know, as an investor in gaming and have been, um, you know, for several years, it starts with the game and the experience of the user. And, you know, we've long believed that NFTs can actually deepen the experience, right? Um, for example, you know, game might take four years to launch. Well, in that time, you know, if you start like sharing NFTs with the community, that's like a way for the community to engage um, way before the game is launched in right, a way right. that they haven't been able to before, as an example. You know, that's a great, yeah, that's a great thing. Yeah, get, getting people I interested well before a game can get out, right? What, what, do, you, what do you think, Sebastian? What, what is gonna improve using NFTs in an industry? Well, uh, you know I'm all about yeah, user-generated content, of course, and the creator economy. So I do believe like any game in the future will have a UGC component, allowing users to create and participate, like to build levels, to build experience and expand the core game. And NFTs at the core are here to reward the creators that contribute towards bringing. And that's actually the origin story of Sandbox. Yeah, UGC can be a little dangerous. I don't know if you guys know the, the industry term, but uh, TTP is a common one. If you don't know that in the gaming industry, then uh, go look it up. But uh, in general, when you give people the right to do some stuff uh, you know, in a game themselves, there, there, there could be some issues, but I think that's a great one. What, what, what do you think, Dirk? What do you think is going to change our industry? Well, in just okay, second that what has been said, but I think the other thing which is quite important is that um, you know, the current games, the way they're built, they're just, you know, there's different game design, and now we're going, you know, the NFTs, when, we, when you start building it, we're talking about true ownership, that's a different type of game. When you start at zero and start building that experience, then people are probably more willing to accept it, and then it has real use cases. Right, because they explicitly created around that design. Yeah, I mean, because it's important, right, to be able to give people an experience that is going to be better than what they have right now. If if NFTs and gaming can't give that experience, then why would people want to adopt them? I mean, I think that's kind of the problem we see with NFTs in general. Is if it can't increase the experience you have right now by twenty percent, then what's the real you know reason to do that? Uh, uh, Sarah, what, what do you think? What do you think about that? Yeah, so NFTs give people ownership of the system, as do the fungible tokens that describe the system that they're in. And what that means is that they become owner producers. So it's not just a 20% change in their experience. It's a, it's a 180 degree change in how they are interacting with the system. They become part of it, they're owners, they're part of the community, they're builders, they're sharing. Um, 
Tokens are a way of creating a community. The token itself describes the perimeter of the community. This is a radically different way of building a game and a community. And um, I think, in fact, that might be part of why existing communities are finding it hard to understand why they're so significant, because it is a radical departure from just being a consumer of a game. This is where you are a co-owner of the game system. And it, you know, that gives you a lot of responsibility to be part of the development, and it gives you a lot of you know, rights over how it, how it unfolds. Yeah, I think the, you know, when you talk about that kind of you know, almost DAO system, right? It's not really set up like a DAO, but it kind of gives you that uh, entry into the game itself, which I think is uh, something you don't see a lot of times. Most times when we touch a game out there, it's in an alpha playable state, you know, and, and you're not giving that early feedback or, or giving any direction. And I think that that's one of the cool things that NFTs do bring on top of what we have right now. What do you think, James? What, what do you think NFTs are going to do here to change things? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's interesting because I would have thought that for gamers, it would be really easy for them to, to move into Web3 because yeah, think about right? it. Like, you're in a game, you have your account, you have your username and password. Is it really that different to 12 seed phrases that you memorize or put on a piece of paper? I guess it is. So, and, and then you have your inventory. All of that stuff in your inventory, we can turn that into an NFT. And, and you get to own that forever, or at least if the blockchain doesn't fail, you get to own it forever. And then we've had guilds in, 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 in games before, and, and how, how variously different are they from, from DAOs that we see today. And so it's interesting. And, and for me, I, I really think it's, it's um, miscommunication uh, about how everything works in Web3. Yes. Um, it's also a UI UX issue. It's difficult for gamers to understand or even go on Coinbase to get an account um, to load it into their game. But over time, we're going to see more companies um, like these guys over here um, build in those tools to, to streamline UI UX so it's easier for your average gamer to be able to access all of these. And, and, I, and, and for me, I think, I think um, Web3 gaming is, is going to be the only gaming we'll see within the next 10 years. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and you know, that brings us to kind of that mainstream issue, right? Why is it that gamers, you would think, you know, me being a lifelong gamer, playing since, you know, five years old on, on the Atari 2600, all the way to what we have now, you think gamers would get this? You know, right now you go buy a skin, it, it instantly goes to zero. You're, you're not, you get nothing from that skin. But if you're buying an NFT, there's a possibility that you're going to be able to resell it later. It has some value and you actually own that. Uh, Kagi, man, what, what do you think is stopping mainstream gamers from getting in on this industry of recognizing that this is, a, this is going to be something that's actually going to benefit them in, in, the, in the long run? Yeah, well, you just touched on it um, at the end right there, talking about money, right? I think that is the main issue, right? Um, gamers, by nature, are not like businessmen or anything like that. They're not really thinking about money. They're thinking about fun. And... Um, most of the NFT hype has been around money and, wow, yeah. this blew yeah. up. And there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, we understand this, right? There's, there's value in, you know, seeing artists blow up like people and stuff like that. But, you know, um, the gamers have seen it just like that, all about money. And if you see the comments on Twitter, YouTube, uh, it's like, I don't care about your PFP that is 200,000 and whatever. And I get them. I get them. But at the core, like you said, um, they should understand that ownership is, they, they already understand ownership. They already get it. They already get it. I mean, the first play to earn and um, kind of like trading came around 2000s with EverQuest, right? Um, and it was Both against TOS. Yeah. And it was against TOS, right? And that is the issue. It's been 20 years of gaming under this kind of law that you can't trade. So it's very weird for them to, to see this. It's so open. Um, so, yeah, that's where... Yeah, and, you know, as you guys were saying, as James was saying, too, you know, it's, and, and Sarah was saying, it's something that we're, you know, as gamers, it's so different from the experience I think we've had, but it makes sense. You know, how, how many people out there own a gaming-related NFT? How many people out there own gaming-related NFTs? I see you. I see you. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, that, that uh, you know, th those properties will be something that makes an impact here, but it's going to take a little while. Uh, Amy, what do, you, what do you think is, is stopping 
mainstream gamers from, from you know, getting in and embracing it? I, I think that it doesn't have to be black and white. It's not one game only has Web3 players and another game you know, doesn't. Actually, I think some gaming companies are experiments, experimenting like on the intersection of that. Like, let's say you have like a game in which like 90% of the users are just playing the game, actually, and just 10% of the users might actually choose to call that NFT and actually do something with it. It's not unlike, I think, the ratio of like what players might be doing like right now, right? They can trade assets even now. But if you think about like, like I'm an FPS fan, like I play a lot of COD, um, and if you have like, you know, Call of Duty player, like if I'm like playing COD versus I'm playing COD, but I can also own NFTs, I would rather do the latter. But the underlying um, thing is that it is a game like Call of Duty, right? It's, like, it's a wonderful, extremely addictive, like awesome game. You enjoy it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's big. You know, it, it, you look at something that has tradable skins, um, and uh, you know, it, it's there, there's a huge market for that. You know, uh, some of these tradable you know skins are going for a massive amount of money. When you're selling you know some of these skins for one hundred fifty thousand dollars, there's no difference between that and an NFT, except for the fact that you know that the NFT is authentic and you know it hasn't been you know compromised in any kind of way. How, I mean, how many people out there have played a video game before where there was some sort of dupe, right? Uh, it, which crash the entire economy. I played multiple games that are, are, you know, RPGs or MMOs or even FPS games where you have those types of items and someone finds some sort of loophole, you know? So what, what do you think, Sebastian? Uh, is that something that you think is gonna be an issue here for gamers? There's a few things I think about that topic. Like, first of all, like, habits are hard to change. So when you've got gamers who grown used for 10, 15 years to a certain gameplay and certain game mechanics, and then you offer them a new value proposition, but not yet at the same level of fun, of the game they engaged previously, they are not so keen to change. And to me, that also means like, it's not a challenge, it's more an opportunity to enlarge the audience of like the total uh, gamers around the world and offer them a different format of entertainment where actually true ownership of your asset is something they would enjoy right from the beginning. And then they will keep playing and engaging into those experiences because they are fun, so it's still very important in gaming. And once you are into that, you never go back into like more traditional never go kind back, of games. You never go back. Where well, like, at the same level of fun and, and experiencing, like if you do not own your asset anymore, if you do not have that freedom to sell them wherever you want, it's kind of it's it's trying to get into playing radio tapes or even CD on music now. Like everyone has Spotify or iTunes. No, you, you make a good point. You know, I think that. Uh, if, if you can get them onboarded, if you can just get them there to understand what it is, and I think that education is a huge part of that, is there's a lack of education and people just don't understand. Like Kagi was saying, there's so many people that just see the very surface level of the NFTs. Oh, these apes that are worth you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, that's stupid, I don't want anything to do with that. But they don't really see the benefits. Um, Dirk, what do you think is, is something that we could do in the educational space to like, further the mainstream audience to get you know, educated in that kind of respect? I think we have, uh, maybe just to take a step back, I think the main mainstream gamer, normally, you know, they purchase maybe a game with free-to-play, whatever, but they know what they're spending, right? And now, with all the downturn, what they're currently seeing, lots of people lost, right? They, 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 you know, so that actually, they invested a lot and they lost it now. So this does not create really lots of confidence, right? So I think one thing is probably we have to decouple more, you know, the, let's say, the speculative nature of crypto from gaming as best as we can in order to create trust. Because otherwise, um, you know, when they, everyone's not unhappy when, they, when they're losing money. So that's the first thing. Yes. The other thing is, uh, we, I think we, because we cannot go one step and then go to th step three right away. People are used today, you know, that, for instance, a concrete example, when they want to sign up somewhere, maybe, you know, they lose their password, right? They want to call someone or at least write an email to support, hey, can you re my And that's a big problem. I mean, the average person just don't want to do that. And that's, I think, where we have to create trust, you know, in those systems and educate and so on. And we have to develop better systems that they actually uh, can them, you know, in terms of ease of use, you know, you know, without thinking and without the risk of losing stuff and thinking that you know, somebody's doing pump and dump on the open crypto market and then the whole game is going to crash, right? That's not what uh, what they what they are looking for, right? I, I think you kind of really hit the nail on the head there with you know speculation being one of the big things. Is that that's a huge part of what we see right now in the industry, and it doesn't have to be. And then the other side is onboarding. Sometimes onboarding is just kind of hard. Uh, uh, Sarah, what, what do you think about the onboarding issue? You know, in particular, being a, a, a wax-based game where onboarding is actually pretty easy to do. How, how do you see that uh, being kind of uh, a, a springboard to the future here for mainstream games? Yeah, so, I mean, the, the big story really here is that 
the technology is still really new, right? I mean, it would be kind of surprising if adoption were more than it is now, given how new the technology is. We were talking backstage, and I think these guys, you've been to this conference since 2019. Back in, and you guys were like some of the first here when it was like 50 people. In 2019, we were block producers on a couple of blockchains, but we weren't building games yet. We were building DAOs. Um, so this technology is still being built, right? It's not super interoperable yet. I think it won't be too long before we'll be able to use NFTs from the sandbox in Alien Worlds and vice versa, right? This is something we're talking yes. about. Um, and when that begins to happen, and we'll have this open metaverse and this open gaming environment where the, the promise of this technology, which is ownership, is actually realized in a portable way. So this is just the beginning of what's happening, and we're all building, and it takes time to build, especially on a blockchain. We're on WAX, as you pointed out, and we're also on the Ethereum blockchain and the Binance Smart Chain, and that um, interoperability, even between those three chains, is a big job to, to do that securely. Um, so, yeah, this is, everyone around the world is building as fast as they can right now with all the Seriously. money that's coming to the space, and it's just a matter of time before we see this interoperability and this connectivity between players. Yeah, I agree, and you bring up a good point about interoperability, right? You know, we talk about this, you know, metaverse or the multiverse, something that we see in like a Ready Player One, right? Uh, where you can take your gaming assets from game to game, anywhere you want. Your avatar travels everywhere you go. James, do you think that that's something that gamers really want, like mainstream gamers want? Is that a future they're looking forward to? And, and I mean, you know, how do they not see NFTs are going to be part of that? Yeah, I mean, that, that's a great question. Um, I do think, so, so my personal belief is, is gamers want to have fun. That, that is their main objective. And so I do believe that, that a multiverse or, or Ready Player One, I mean, Ready Player One had great reception. It really broadened everyone's view about the metaverse, especially in the gaming sense. And, and I do think it is an, a very exciting um, product. Something that Sarah mentioned actually, which was um, really funny, was uh, we were talking backstage and we were talking about fixing bugs in our, in our games. And it's like you fix one bug and it's like another bug comes up the next day. And, and I think, um, just coming back to an earlier conversation, I, I guess, um, um, I, I do think sometimes um, crypto or cryptocurrency or the world of cryptocurrencies and NFTs are moving, so, are moving so quickly that people forget that developing quality games take time. Um, we're still at a phase where a lot of the games that are coming out ready for market are slightly lower level indie games. Um, we do need the time to build out quality games like like some of these guys are, are doing here. I mean, like Seb, you guys have been building for the last two to three years. Um, Sarah, you guys have been doing it for two years. I mean, we're talking about the average game. So say for example, Blizzard or Ubisoft, they take anywhere from five to nine years. Like World of Warcraft took, took them 12 years to build out. Um, and so I, I do think there is, there needs to be, there there is a, a need for our users or, or, or Web3 gamers um, who are looking forward to the industry is that quality takes time. Um, and as Sarah mentioned, we are working our asses off to get that to you as soon as possible. So um, if, you, if you just bear with us, um, hopefully we'll be in a, in, a, in a GameStop near you. There you go. And, and we're early. Like all you guys out there right now that you're here, you know, think, oh my God, look how many people are here. You're still early. Trust me, we have a lot more to go. Now, just to kind of wrap things up here, guys, uh, Kaki, you know, what are you excited about in NFTs? What's the, like, just real quick, what's the, what's the thing you think is going to be the next step here in NFTs in our industry? We're, we're, we're on that cutting edge. What's that cutting edge next step? I mean, we've already seen it. I mean, Sandbox is a perfect example of that. Um, it's being able to take an NFT like CyberKongs or whatever and just connect to the, to, to the Sandbox and go into different experiences um, that is, I don't, I don't think necessarily gamers want it, but once they know about it, it's like, wow. It's like, imagine being um, in Nintendo and grabbing a Mario and using that Mario in every other experience that they came out with, right? That's basically what we're going to see in the future. Uh, I'm, we're actually seeing it right now. With yeah, the yeah we're at the beginning yeah. phase. Yeah, so I'm excited phase. about that, yeah, for sure. Well, Amy, what do you think is going to be like the next step here in NFTs and gaming? What do you think we're going to see here as the next kind of cutting edge thing? Um, we were talking backstage how I'm pretty ex um, excited about all the experimentation going on in Korea. Uh, I think that market is helped by the fact that Koreans um, are less kind of like adverse to 
NFTs and games than I think a lot of the Western audiences. And so that gives a lot of the major kind of publicly traded gaming companies a lot of courage to experiment in this space. And so, um, you know, I'm a geek, so I, I love like looking at game tokenomics and, and just sort of jamming with them on that. And it's, it's pretty fun. And I'm really excited to, to see some of the, the titles coming out. What, what, what do you think, Seb? What, what is going to be the next thing, real quick? All right. Well, I, I think we haven't yet seen like what will be the massive success into blockchain gaming. And well, we are the platform that provides some of the most creative tools for new builders to come up with these kind of experiences. And I just enjoy seeing the community coming up with the content, the characters, and then leveraging our possibilities towards that. Avatars is typically, and characters collection is typically one way forward, which I think will really take off. There you go. Dirk, one sentence, man. What do you think? Cutting edge of NFTs. What's coming? So what's coming is I think we have to stand, we have standards for NFTs, right? So let's say grab cars. We have a car in, let's say, an upland, and I can take that, and we have the automator on it, and I can use it the same thing in sandbox or in alien worlds, right? So standards for NFTs. I like that. Interoperability standards. What do you think, Sarah? I'd say fungible tokens, NFTs, and DAOs are all tokenized on-chain accounts, entities, and DAOs using NFTs within a game. Yeah, very cool, yeah. Um, for me, it's the AAA games, like these guys, Alluvia, My Neighbor Alice. We're going to see real quality work in the next couple of years. Very cool. Well, hey, thank you guys so much for having us here. I uh, appreciate it. Make sure you go follow us, and if you guys love NFT gaming, make sure that you guys are out there and supporting it. We'll see you guys next time. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Shout out to my sponsor, Wax. <laughs> much love. <laughs>